Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are working in Chapter 18, which is about chemical equilibrium. And today we're going to be talking about shifting equilibrium. So Le Chatelier's principle states that if a system at equilibrium is disrupted, it will shift to reduce uh, that disruption and to reestablish the new equilibrium. So a stress on the system will result in a shift to remove the stress. And those disruptions could include changes in the reactant or product concentration, remembering that those brackets refer to molarity, moles per liter. If it is a gas phase reaction, changes in the volume of the reaction container will have a stressful uh, result and temperature changes and temperature changes particularly when we're talking about um, exothermic and endothermic reactions. So for a reactant or product concentration with a system at equilibrium when the concentration of a reactant or product is increased the equilibrium will shift to consume whatever is added. And so the equilibrium will shift either to the left or to the right. When the concentration of a reactant or product is removed, again, the equilibrium will shift to produce more of whatever was removed. And so again, it will shift either to the left or to the right. So if we have the reaction A plus B yields C plus D, they're all in the gas phase. Adding reactant will shift things to the right to form products. Adding product on this side would shift it back to the left to produce more uh, of the reactants, so the reverse direction. Removing reactant will shift it to the left. Again, it'll form more reactant. And removing product would result in it shifting toward the product direction. Note that changes in concentration have no effect on the value of the equilibrium constant. Although there's new concentrations, they're going to eventually result in the same value of the equilibrium constant once re the equilibrium is reestablished. And remember, this whole thing about Le Chatelier's principle is that a stress to the system will result in the equilibrium being reestablished, and hence no change in the value of the equilibrium constant. So here's an example. Consider the following system at equilibrium. So this is carbon monoxide plus oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. Predict the effect of the following changes when the system is initially in a state of equilibrium and assume that the reaction container volume is constant. So we don't have to worry about that since this is gas phase. So if carbon dioxide is added to the system, what would happen? If oxygen is added to the system, what will happen? If carbon monoxide gas is removed, what will happen? So here's our reaction again. And if carbon dioxide gas is added, that is a product. You could expect the increase in product will result in a shift to the left to reduce that. That means that the concentration of the carbon dioxide would decrease and that the carbon monoxide and oxygen would increase. If we were to add oxygen, which is a reactant, then we would expect a shift to the right to form products. That would mean that the concentration of carbon dioxide would increase and carbon monoxide and oxygen would decrease. And if we were to remove carbon monoxide, which is a reactant, we would expect it to shift to the left again to form more reactants. And so we would expect then that the concentration of carbon dioxide would decrease and carbon monoxide and oxygen would increase. So let's talk about temperature. Temperature is going to depend on whether it's exothermic or endothermic. So we'll start with endothermic. So in an endothermic reacts, reaction such as this, heat is on the reactant side because we need to add heat to get it to react. An increase in temperature will shift toward the right, toward the formation of product, because that would then result in a um, reduction in this stress to reestablish equilibrium. So if you're shifting it to form more products, then the value of the KEQ will increase because products are in the numerator in our KEQ expression. 
if we were to decrease the temperature, now our reaction is going to shift left. That means there's more reactant concentration, and so the value of the KEQ is going to decrease, remembering that reactants are in the denominator of the equilibrium expression. For an exothermic reaction, so here's our exothermic reaction, and heat is written on the product side because exothermic reactions produce heat. An increase in temperature is going to shift toward the left. That means that the reactants will be increasing, and so as a result, the KEQ would decrease, remembering reactants are in the denominator. The denominator is getting bigger, the value is going to go down. And if we were to decrease the temperature, that would shift things toward the right to produce more heat. And since that would produce more products, products are in the numerator, the value of the equilibrium constant would increase. Note, equilibrium constants are listed for specific temperatures because changing the temperature will change the relative amounts of reactants and products. So how about pressure? A change in pressure really only affects equilibrium systems that include substances in the gas phase. And it's really only when the total number of moles of gas on the left side is different from the total number of moles of gas on the right side. That's when a change in pressure will have an effect on your equilibrium. Similar to changes in concentration, though, changes in pressure will not affect the value of the equilibrium constant because equilibrium will be reestablished.